the interview you're about to see with Madeline Black was actually really powerful. She discusses angels and the impact they had in my life. She looks at hope and we also look at a way through for survivors. So enjoy, I'm sure you'll get something out of it. My guest today is Gloria Masters. She is an author, an advocate, and an activist for all things child sexual abuse. She speaks from 16 years of lived experience and has managed to turn the final caller of healing into giving back. She does this through highlighting the issue of child sexual abuse to help other survivors. She is currently writing her second book, Flight Path to Healing, which is a guide for survivors. She's a mother, and her career includes teaching, therapy, and business consulting. She regularly blogs on GloriaMasters.com and has created the podcast, Handing the Shame Back, which is a safe space for other survivors to share their stories. Her focus is on hope, love and joy, and she follows her angels wherever they lead her. So welcome to the show, Gloria. It's so lovely to have you here all the way from New Zealand. And thanks for staying up late for us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, an honour to be here. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. So we should say, obviously, from your bio at the start of the show, that we do discuss childhood sexual abuse. So if someone is listening and they're not quite healed, just, you know, uh, take good self-care is really what I would say. We will try not to trigger anyone. But anyway, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the first question I ask every one of my guests that comes on the show, because we are called Unbroken, the podcast, is that what does that word unbroken mean to you, Gloria? Oak tree. Because an oak tree stands and it stands the test of time. The wind, the rain, the hail, the torrents can come flying at it and it may bend, but it never breaks. It is beautiful, isn't it? And it also yeah. means that your roots are firmly grounded. Yeah. Which I love. And I have read your book. I have worked a lot with childhood sexual abuse, but I was shocked at the level of abuse that you experience. And it's not an easy read, but I think it's a very important read for people to realise just what can take place. But also on the flip side of that, how you can survive something so deprived. So could you tell us really, I guess, what age the abuse started? It was, you were very little really, weren't you? Yeah, so infant um, and up until the age of 16, when I no longer had to see my father. Um, so that was um, the numbers one and six have always meant a lot to me. And I had never realised why until um, I started writing my own book and then it hit me. I always used to look for the numbers one and six everywhere I went, and, and that's why. And that gives me shivers, because I also have a magical number, different numbers, 44. And, and it appears to me it manifests itself in, in so many ways. So it's interesting, isn't it, the numerology yes. in that. But so you were just very little, and there was a time yes. when your parents separated, and you were just 11, and you were given yes. a choice of which parent to live with. We have to say that your mum... Um, was quite neglectful as well. She did, she kind of abused you in different ways, but you went to live with your mum, your sorry, your father and your dad. And yeah. could you speak a little bit about how that was for you? Yeah. So look, um, when I was eleven years of age, my parents separated, and we were made to line up in the lounge and um, told who to choose with the very strong, um, emphatic. Uh, emphasis being on what you choose you cannot change your mind on and my father tricked me he um, promised me a horse well that never eventuated but the next 18 months living in his house were um, unbelievable Madeline just abuse psychological torture um, and you know I believe he's a psychopath or he is passed now, but he was definitely a deranged psychopath. And I'm very um, grateful to be alive and have emerged through it, sane in the whole. Because I'm yeah. sadly, it wasn't just the abuse that you experienced from your father and your no. brother. He also prostituted you to yeah. 
pedophile rings and you were a sex slave basically, weren't you? Yes. So uh, from the time I was very little, I was trained by my um, father's mother and one of his sisters um, in the art of seduction. And um, they were paid a commission by my father to, um, to ensure that I delivered the best um, sexual repertoire I could so the pedophiles would pay more. My thing is this, one of the real focuses I have is the, the power of the silence out there around this topic. Yeah. And I, my real core objective for me is to help others to hand the shame back by even speaking to a friend or, or writing out what happened to them. You don't have to do what what you you did, Madeline, and what I'm doing, which is write a book and and create platforms to to share. You can do it very gently and quietly and privately. But I truly believe, even now as we're speaking, we're handing the shame back Absolutely. because the more we speak, the less power this has. The body never lies and the body never forgets. Absolutely. And I always think, well, that's one less that I ever have to have again. And also it's yeah. a little bit like a contraction, you know, that it's hard for a while, <laughs> but then that one's done. And then we're going to get the baby at the end. You know? and, and, yeah. and if anyone's listening and we're kind of, we're not making light of it you know we've we can no. laugh and we can smile about it which is what I want people to hear as well and like you yes. it's about the hope and the love and the joy mm -hmm. and yeah there's so many similarities so was it um therapeutic for you to write your story down and how did that process work well it was interesting it was such a um a duality actually <laughs> because on the one hand it was so therapeutic and I just I wrote in seven weeks Draft number one was done in seven weeks. But it was so traumatizing because here I am, Miss Braveheart, and I'm out there walking the area where the abuse occurred, my school outside the old family home. Big mistake. I was doing it by myself. And um, I rang my therapist and um, she said, what's going on? And I, I just burst into tears and I said, I'm just doing some research for the book. And she said, don't you ever, ever do that alone again. Yeah. You cannot be alone. You were alone then. Yeah. It's just re-traumatizing. So and look, I totally I'm not trying to make... understand that yeah. because, you know, the block of flats where I was raped when I was younger, yeah. I could never drive past that. I couldn't even look at it. No. And just the other week I was in London and we drove past it and I thought, it's okay now. It's really, it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. done. Uh, yeah. And I actually even told my youngest who was in the car, that's where it took place and they never knew that. So it was, wow. it was interesting. Yeah, really interesting to see. Wow. Can we test ourselves and we don't get triggered anymore? What yeah. do your children know of what happened to you? Have they, have they read your book? Um, no, and I'm, I've protected them a bit actually from this because to me, I'm just their lovely, annoying frustrating, wonderful mother, mm -hmm. which is great, which is exactly what I want them to have, that mm -hmm. relationship with me. But they they got very traumatized just hearing about it. So, you know, I'm always going to be a lovely mum. God knows where I got that from. Uh, and um, and and protect the children. If if they ever want to read it, they, they can do that easily. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't need them to, for my yeah. sake. I'm, I'm fine. But do you speak um, to them about the angels? Are there angels around them as well? Yes, yeah, constantly. Yeah. yeah. So you, they came to you, but you can now draw on them when you need them, or are they always with you, your angels? Oh, I was talking to them just before you and I came on, mm -hmm. because I, I really feel um, as though I'm, I'm guided. I feel like I'm, I'm here as a a person who's potentially carrying a bit of a light mm -hmm. for others. So I'd yeah. say you've been a bit modest there. It's a bit more than a bit of a light. It's <laughs> as if you are a vessel, really, and they are guiding that vessel. Yeah. And do you think yeah. we all have angels around us, but we just I don't know how to access them? Or we haven't been, I think, when you go to the edge of the earth, we're then yeah. taken to another dimension, aren't we? Yes, and absolutely, and that happened to me 
several times and and I nearly lost my life and mm -hmm. and that was that was what that was but the point is I'd talk to them all the time because they were all I had and I was so isolated and left and abandoned um I just had to find a way to manage manage them it wasn't really safe for me to have friends mm -hmm. around so I think um you know with with the angels for for people and your question is do we all have it yes we do and I think sometimes what we do as humans is we wait till we're at the edge and then we say help can you give me a hand up and I guess the angels just want us to know look we've got you we're around you we're holding you um, and, and there's kind of if I say a reason for everything I don't mean to minimize at all what people go through um, please please no yeah that's a tricky that. one with me because I used to think oh everything happens for a reason but now I don't know now I think we can make reason out of things that happen to us that's probably more yeah and we can Absolutely. turn our pain into purpose so I, I kind of that's it. flipped it because yeah. everyone you say well everything happens for a reason I think bloody hell no it doesn't yeah. but yeah. I think I've taken yeah. I've made reason from it and what do you yes. do about people um, I mean were you worried about exposing the angels if people kind of poo-pooed them when they read your book or they dismissed it was that ever a concern or do you have that go go hard <laughs> do whatever you want it's not what you think about me is not my problem I um I'm here with love and light and yeah. um just doing my best to to share this so other survivors out there up to one and three in our country is one report yeah. um can can perhaps feel a little bit less alone mm -hmm. so, you are such a, and a really very moved to speak to you because you are so centered and grounded despite all the degradation and you know everything that you went through it is a remarkable journey so before we sign off because the time just whizzes by anybody listening right now anything that you haven't said that you'd like to or any kind of words of wisdom you'd like to leave us with here's your chance okay so Ne never doubt yourself never ever doubt that what emerges in you isn't true because you have this you know truth deep down your body doesn't lie and um i just want to give all you survivors a, a big hug out there and just let you know you're never alone we stand with you and that's my angels as well so <laughs> absolutely just leaves me to thank you so much for staying up late over the other side of the world for us and i know this episode sadly will resonate with, with many people so um, yeah. i'm grateful for you and your voice and just the beautiful thank being you. that you are thank you so thank much thank you